alhamdulillah, what is sweeter and what is better than remembering our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering our blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. And really all that needs to be said is what has already been said and that both poetry and prose and mentioning the blessed Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabihi wa sallam. If we just look very closely at the 10 chapters of the Bordah, but in particular the first chapter, and all of the various fusul and chapters of the Mawlid that we are reciting, but in particular the, that first chapter, we will find that, find that all of it is summarized in the first chapter. It sets the tone for everything that comes after it. So Imam Busiri, that his first chapter is titled Fil Ghazal, Fil Ghazal, which is essentially love poetry. And his complaining, that complaining, the way that a lover truly complains, as we will see, that because his state of love is so powerful that he's complaining about his state. And that we shouldn't think that this is the type of complaint that other people tend to have when they complain about some manifestation of the divine decree. This is someone who is that lost in love and that at the same time, despite everything that they're going through, still wants more. And knows that the pleasures of love are mixed with pain. And that this is part of the that affair of love. This is one of the things that happens. And so that both of these chapters tell us a little bit about how it is that we should be. As for Imam al Busiri, he uses all of these different words. Like sub, sub subbu is to pour, and the sub is the one that has love poured into his heart in every single moment. And he says about this individual, ayah sub subbu, and nalhuba munkatimun. Does the sub, the one who loves like this, think that he can conceal his love? minhu Is that how can he conceal his love when his eyes are swollen and the tears are? that dripping and then he uses the word hawa which is also one of the blessed words for love hawa hawa yahwi is to fall it's similar like in the sense that we say in english someone falling in love that were it not to be for hawa that this love that we have that you wouldn't have shed tears and this is in reference to the lover that in the that pre-Islamic Arabia, where he would go to the place that his beloved was, but they had moved camps, and that they would remember the way that the tents looked, they remember the way that the surroundings look, and all of the nostalgia associated with it, and they would stand there and cry. And that Alhamdulillah, just think about all of the blessed, that athar that we have of the Prophet Wasallam and all of their meanings whether they be athar in terms of relics that were connected to him وسلم, or that athar in terms of the traditions that teach us about him وسلم, and that all of his blessed character traits, everything that was associated with him. And one of the amazing things, one of the amazing things is, is that if you look at the shama'il, is that the shama'il literally are, it refers to the physical that in that character traits of our Prophet but then you have a mention of all of these other things, that the type of uh, utensils and dishes that he used to, eat, that, to drink and eat with, and the type of possessions that he used to have. And so that because they were connected to him, that they were indeed something great. Our teachers used to mention often the blessed siwak, that it's a small little branch on a tree, that once it is connected to the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it became something special, and of the 90-something plus benefits that they mention of the Siwak, one of the greatest benefits is, they say, it will help remind you of the Shahadatain before you die. And how could it be otherwise when our Prophet said, sallallahu It is a purification of the mouth, and a source of contentment for our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here you have just a branch because our Prophet that touched it and used it and it became affiliated with him, that subhanAllah, that it led to this great fadila and this great merit and there's many other blessings of the Siwak as well, but it was because it was connected to him. 
And this is why in the chapter on water in the books of Fiqh, they talk about the greatest types of water. And that if you would ask the common Muslim, what is the very best water in existence? Any water that ever has existed or any water that exists now or any water that ever will exist? What is the very best water of all? And they say it was the water that came from the blessed hands of our Prophet ﷺ by way of miracle. And one of them put them in lines of poetry and said, Afdal al miyai ma'un qad naba' bain asabi in nabiyil muttaba. The very best water of all is the blessed water that came from the hands of our Prophet ﷺ. And then after that, that we have Zamzam. Yalihi Zamzamun. Uh, after that is Zamzam water and then the Kawthar. And then someone might think, wait a second, how could Zamzam be before the Kawthar? But they say, and this is in uh, the Khir al Muhammadiyah uh, by Sheikh Muhammad bin Ali bin Maliki, he explains it by saying the best night in the right of our Prophet ﷺ was the late Isra Miraj. And that in preparation for that, it was one of the three and some say four incidents where the Prophet's blessed heart was washed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it was washed with Zamzam water. And so were there to have been a more honorable water in existence, it surely would have been used to wash the blessed heart of our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so Zamzam is special. That after that water that came directly from him, it's the best water. And then after that is the Kothar. Inna a'atayn haka al-Kothar. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, in Kothar, means abundant good. And so that has a very general application to all of the good that has come. Every blessing, whether it be worldly or religious, in this world and the next, ultimately, stems from our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then the meaning of kawthar is specifically that a river in paradise that flows into his blessed basin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidah Aisha said is that if you put your hands over your ears and you hear the sound that that makes when you cover your ears, that's how the howd sounds. And that's how the kawthar sounds as it flows into the basin of our Prophet But also one of the meanings of al-kawthar is the blessed family of the Prophet So in the, the city of Tarim, whenever they would recite this, like in a khatm of the Quran, that they always say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala. When they would get to, Inna atayinaka al-kawthar. They say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala. Because that hum al kathir al tayyib al mad'u lahum, that they are the abundant good that was prayed for them, that by the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the night of the wedding of Sayyidina uh, Fatima and Sayyidina Ali ibn Talib, Allah akhrij minhum al kathir al tayyib. Oh Allah, mean, bring many beautiful and the good people from their loins. And Ahl al-Bayt al-Rasul, subhanAllah, to this day, that how many of the blessed members of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu are still here with us, and how many have there been throughout the centuries. So alhamdulillah, we, are, we learn how it is that we should be in relation to that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he goes on, but the last one we'll mention from the Buddha Sharifa, uh, is that Na'am, Sara Taifa Man Ahwa Fa'arrakani Yes, the Taif. Right, the mere imagining of the image of the one that I love, Sarah, that was crossing my heart by night. Right? And what was the result? Fa'arraqani. It kept me awake. It kept me awake. Khalas. That as a result of that, that night time and that we just heard in the Qasida uh, about the special states that people have that at night time when it is dark with our Prophet Sallallahu and then this is where he says well, and indeed that love mixes pleasure with pain but then if we look at the other mode that what we were reciting tonight that we have similar descriptions about the way that a person should be every time that we hear the blessed name of our Prophet Sallallahu we should have our hearts filled with love and that is one of the greatest things that we can do of all. It's one of the, the greatest acts that we could ever do of all. And one of the things that Sheikh Muhammad Sadiq, may Allah preserve him, he used to say, is that there is no scale that large enough to weigh the love of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so that Sayyidi Habib Omar says, Wallahi, ma look at Habib that did muhib. 
illa wadha walihan nashwana means that, that he swears an oath by Allah is that the lover does not mention the beloved or the beloved is not mentioned to the lover except that he becomes passionately overwhelmed with joy and so walihan is from wala which is to be it's like bewildered and that not fully there, there with you and I'm not mistaken in the Urdu poem that he was saying they want all right does that mean crazy all like in Farsi so it's the similar meaning that subhanallah this is what happens and that uh, the muhib is ma'dur he is excused and then he's neshwan which means intoxicated as a result of the habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that where are the lovers who find ease in sacrificing their souls and every precious thing this is jinas using these two beautiful words and nafus and nafais it relates to that your own self you're ready to sacrifice that and everything precious anything that relates to wealth or anything else to what degree are we willing to sacrifice and you can't truly be a lover if you're not willing to sacrifice and you can't truly be a lover until you're willing to give things up and until you're willing to let things go and so to the degree of one's ability to sacrifice is to the degree that they will truly love and this is clearly seen in the lives of the blessed companions of our prophet muhammad sallallahu who were willing to sacrifice everything for anything that had to do with the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa so the lover has to be willing to sacrifice and then he goes into more detail we all know these blessed lines but this is really all that needs to be said is that how we should be when we hear the blessed name of our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time we hear his name we want to have a renewed love in our heart every time that we hear his name that we should feel that a deep connection to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that name should be sweet and bring great joy and bring great pleasure to the heart and this time that we spend in gatherings like this don't think that they're in vain this is the greatest provision of all for the moment of truth that you and I are all going to face and all of us know that our dear brother Osama Kanan oh that it was in majadis like this that we used to that be with him reciting these blessed poems for many many years from the time that we converted now that uh, 25 years ago and that all it takes is that seeing anyone die up close but especially if it's someone that you knew and that you were that very close to and had an intimate relationship with to actually see their grave and to be buried six feet under the earth and to know that this is all of our end this is where we're all going to be and some of us might live longer than others some of us might outlive our kids and some of us that might not outlive our kids we don't know which one of us is going to go and anything could happen to anyone at any given time people could die suddenly or people could get sick or people could that live a long time and not really have that many physical problems but it's an enormous ibra it's an enormous ibra and a lesson that you and all you and I have to take and that we have to have zad provision for our lord and some of the greatest provision that we can have of all and that we can that prepare for the meeting with our lord is the provision that we can have of love of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family that as it is said about sayyida khadija kubra dhikruha yuhyi fuadi that the mention of her brings my heart to a life fa hiya rukni wa imadi she is my pillar and my foundation the love of her on the day of resurrection is my provision that is our provision is that hasha that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, would punish someone who has love fixated between his two sides of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I think it was Sheikh Isa al Bayarnuni has those blessed lines of poetry. Is it Jasadun Tamakkad Huma Ahmadafihi? Tallahi inna Balda la tublihi. Is that a that physical body 
the, the love of Ahmed al Prophet Muhammad is firmly rooted in by Allah. It's one of the ways that you can say an oath. Wallahi or tallahi or billahi. Tallahi. Swearing an oath by Allah is that the earth will not eat that corpse. It won't eat that corpse. And that there are stories that indicate this blessed individual is buried in Baqi al Gharqad. In the blessed city of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and this is how they found his grave and found him in his grave even at a later time, is it intact as it was, as if the day that he was buried. And so this is the way that the people of Allah are, and they spend this time day in and day out, day in and day out, year in year out, year in year out, throughout their life, in gatherings of remembrance in both of their meanings, learning, but also. That mentioning our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and having love for him. And this is why we all have to be there for each other. And our loved ones that have now returned to Allah Taala, wa ta we have to remember them. And we have to that make dua for them in the gatherings. And hopefully that by bringing them to heart is that they will get benefits even in their grave. And without doubt that someone that was a means for someone else to receive any type of good, any good that comes to that person still is received by that person without diminishing their reward in the slightest bit, even when they're in their graves. And anyone that is that they then affect, anyone that is that they then benefit, the same thing happens. But one of the greatest things that we can all do is collectively that show and exemplify our love for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for his deen and for his family and for his ummah and for his companions and everything that was associated with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that we realize the very least affiliation to him in any possible way, whatever it might be, is the greatest honor of all. And this is what Sheikh Yusuf al-Nabahani was referring to when he said in his blessed lines of poetry, Ana abdun li sayyid al -anbiya'i. I am a servant, literally a slave, of the master, master of the prophets. Ana abdun li sayyid al -anbiya'i. wa wala'i lahu al Wala'i is that this love of mine, and he repeats the word wala'i. Wala is also a word for love. It can mean loyalty. It's like a deep, loyal love. This deep, loyal love that I have for him, oh, this deep, loyal love that I have for him is qadim. It is ancient. Ana abdun li abdihi wa li abdi abdi abdun kada bi ghairintihai. I am the slave of his slave and the slave of his slave, slave, slave. In this way, without any end. Meaning that we're the slave to have a slave, and the slave you actually can't have a slave, but we're the slave to have a slave, and that slave to have a slave, and keep going. Khalas. Any type of affiliation that, that I have to the Blessed Messenger is, is the greatest honor of all, and nothing is more important than that. And that he goes on to say these very beautiful words, where then he says, is that, La antahi. عن القرب من بابي رضاه وأدخل مع جملة الدخلاء is that I will never cease to praise him and to enter into the door of his contentment amongst those who enter عسى يقول لي أنت حسان الثناء سلمان الحسن ولا perhaps that it will be said to me that you are the Hassan of the praise of me meaning you praise me like Sayyidina the Hassan ibn Thabit and the Salman of my love. And the Salman of my love. And that, mashallah, tabarakallah, that he keeps going on. But, وَبِرُوهِ أَفْدِي تُرَابَ حِمَاهُ وَلَهُ الْفَضْلُ فِي قَبُولِ فِدَائِي Is that, that uh, with my soul, is that I leave it as ransom for the dirt of his sanctuary. And then if he accepts it, the fadl is for him, not for me. Yani, my soul is ransom, not for, for him, of course for him, and anything related to him. But my soul is ransom for the dirt of his sanctuary, let alone for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that if that's accepted, the fadl is for the rasul, not for me. Look at how selfless these people were. And look at how they understood true honor. And he was a great scholar hourly. But there were many great scholars amongst the companions. There were many great scholars for those who came. But they realized this door is the greatest door of all. And that one of the things that we can do regularly is 
when we're sitting in Sadawat upon the Prophet imagine his presence, that he's right before you, and how radiant that presence would be. And what would it be like to be in his presence, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and how he looked and how you would feel and what would happen. And you can only approximate that with the great inheritors that you've seen, and we know how we are in their presence. But then what about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What about being in his presence? And then how would all of the Anbiya be? How would all of the Sahaba be and everyone after them? This is that a good practice that we could do to think about what it is that we need to be like in front of him, sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah ta'ala ta ta fill our hearts with the love of him. And may Allah ta'ala ta bless all of us and keep all of us together. This is like a reunion every time that we come back, seeing all these blessed people that have been so much a part of the Fakir's life yani, for all of these years. So it's always wonderful to be here with you all. May Allah ta'ala ta ta keep us together. And may none of us, none of us be left behind. May we all stay together in the dunya and in the barzakh and in the akhirah. Inshallah ta'ala with our teachers and their teachers' teachers and all of the lovers of the Rasul back to the Prophet himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to remember these moments in the highest levels of paradise wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi